Okay, before we jump in, this video is going to be controversial. I'm well aware that a hefty chunk of my viewership skews Republican, it skews conservative, and more importantly, the nature of what I do on this channel, generally speaking, attracts a much more skeptical mind. Highlighting fraud, exposing scams, evaluating businesses, crypto, video games, you name it, that's fun for me, but the underlying attraction to these topics is a pursuit of truth. Over the past five years, the channel has evolved from something primarily aimed at stat compositions and meta mechanics in particular video games to pro-consumer advocacy, and eventually investigations into all manner of illicit dealings and shady topics. I've covered situations where companies were blackmailing their customers, or where crypto projects and major video game organizations were scamming members. I've talked about hackers who brought entire franchises to their knees, conspiracy theories about AI, corporate buyouts, financial cover-ups, and commercialized social media crime. Over the past five years, the channel has fundamentally changed, and while I do still cover and appreciate video games a great deal, it is far more likely now that you will find, to the best of my ability, I might add, an in-depth look at whatever topics are dominating the contemporary zeitgeist right now, whether they be technological, social, political, or otherwise. In short, I have become motivated by a desire to unravel things that are untrue, deceptive, or predatory, and with that in mind, I find myself with a burning desire to discuss 2,000 Mules. Not because I agree or disagree with its bare premise, not because I want to undermine or disprove its findings, but because this documentary is fundamentally flawed in its production decision making on such a massive scale, I simply cannot take it seriously at this time. I understand full well that this will very likely lead to a vitriolic barrage from anyone who supports the underlying premise, but please give me a few minutes of your time because I think that when rational conversations can be had, this documentary will be seen for what it really is a profit-driven, partisan effort to earn as much money as possible that manages to spin a very compelling narrative with zero actual evidence. For those that have not watched the film, 2000 Mules is a documentary from Dinesh D'Souza about fraud in the 2020 election. It was aired in specific time windows on the website rumble.com with a $30 ticket price. It was screened by Donald J. Trump at a private showcase in Mar-a-Lago and is purported to contain evidence, widespread evidence, of voter fraud on a scale we have never seen before in this country's history that would overturn the 2020 election. It is very well edited, it is well shot from a cinematic perspective, but once the dust has settled, once you start to see the narrative arc unfold, and once you realize what the film itself actually contains, it cannot be taken seriously at this particular point in time. So, let's dive in. Again, I understand that the emotional response here for a great many viewers will be anger, but please give me a chance to discuss why I'm saying all this. The film begins with a slickly edited intro that quotes news media, politicians, and public figures, thereby establishing a very simple premise. The 2020 election was stolen by a massive network of fraudulent voters who stuffed ballot boxes, which ultimately skewed the overall results by changing the outcome of key battleground states. This, as a baseline claim in some form or another, has been a focal point for many Americans ever since November of 2020. During that election, deemed to be the most free and fair election we have ever seen in the country's history by a veritable army of talking heads, in my experience, when established institutions are aggressively telling you a congruent narrative all at the same time, it's very likely you should be skeptical. We see this play out historically over and over. But anyway, during that election, more votes were cast by far than any previous election in American history, leading to record voter turnout numbers on both sides of the political aisle, with over 81 million votes for Joe Biden and 74 million votes for Donald Trump. After the election was over, political turmoil ensued. One side claimed that this was the most secure example of democratic election proceedings the world has ever seen, while the other claimed that there had been widespread fraud, illegal manipulation of process, and a multitude of other discrepancies. This divide has honestly only gotten worse at the more extreme ends of the spectrum, and 2000 Mules, in its effort to prove that the 2020 election was improper, has made some very, very bold claims. To explain this properly, I want to go through chronologically and discuss the strengths and weaknesses of this documentary because I believe that deliberate choices have been made to obfuscate just how weak their particular case actually is. To be clear, the methods they are employing are actually excellent, and I would be strongly in favor of further investigation with the same data and system, but the documentary as it stands today is unbelievably bad at showcasing real evidence, while hiding behind a smokescreen of incredibly serious allegations. After the intro is over and the cinematography takes a back seat, we meet the parties involved. This is where the film actually does do a very good job at painting a compelling picture, and the first 40 or so minutes is honestly very strong. In those 40 minutes, we meet the architects behind an organization called True the Vote, and True the Vote is an anti-election fraud initiative founded in 2009. 
This by itself avoids some of the immediate potential criticism because it is not a group that emerged as a direct response to the 2020 election in particular, and has actually been closely involved with election security topics for over 10 years. Now, I think I'm going to avoid a history lesson here on who they are and where they came from, what organization they morphed out of is what I mean, and where their funding primarily originates, but that origin story is probably going to be used to discredit them at some point in time in the future because it's rather skewed. However, most people watching aren't really thinking about that and simply won't care, so I'll just move on. In these 10 past years, one of the founders has testified before Congress, and you would be forgiven for believing that the organization had also played an important part in what amounts to a successful expose of actual voter fraud. This is where the film on a surface level gains the most strength because the insinuation is that True the Vote had something or anything to do with a Republican representative who was ousted a year after his election for absentee voter fraud. The story is rather complicated, but Representative Mark Harris's campaign had run an illegal voter fraud operation in the 9th Congressional District of North Carolina that eventually fell apart as a result of testimony from family members, I believe. And True the Vote had nothing to do with this, but clever context framing and the willingness of this documentary crew to use examples on their own side of the aisle builds a sense of impartiality. Now, personally, I happen to have pre-existing knowledge on this topic from a different video I almost did, so it immediately had me skeptical when the framing seemed to point to them being somehow involved. It's not explicitly stated directly that they're involved, but I would be willing to bet that many people watching had that sort of impression. However, that's less important as they get further into their claims, because what comes next is fairly serious. True the Vote claims that there is a process by which voters are paid for absentee or mail-in ballots through a mule and charity system, where those ballots are then filled out and distributed to drop boxes by a network of individuals on a massive scale. The way that they have determined this is geolocation tracking data from individual cell phones, and to bolster the credibility of that technology, they cite a police case where it is used to catch violent criminals. It is claimed directly that True the Vote purchased cell phone geo-tracking data in the area of an incident where a young girl was killed, tragically, evaluated that data, and then turned it over to the FBI, resulting in more arrests and greater closure to that case, which, if true, is amazing and commendable. This kind of application is fantastic, and it very much does lend credence to the idea that this technology and this data could be used to evaluate the election. So how does it work? The framework is rather simple and relies on tracking the pattern of movement for individuals who visit a multitude of ballot drop box locations, as well as the unnamed charities that are alleged to be the dispersal mechanisms for fraudulent ballots. The example they give is this. One individual being tracked by data points from their cell phone, geolocation tracking data, visits 28 ballot drop boxes in the same day. Some of them are clearly reached after a significant course deviation, specifically to that particular area, and five of the unnamed charities as well. This is where the documentary reaches a tipping point. They've established credibility for the technology that they use to evaluate where people are going and when. They have reached across the aisle and elevated the idea that election security is bipartisan and un unbiased, I guess is the right word for it. And they have now drawn what appears to be a seriously improbable movement pattern to 28 ballot boxes on the same day. This is the time when viewers will likely begin to either buy into what they are saying full scale or begin to back away as the rest is generally unfolding. What follows next is a buckshot approach to the data where they jump from a single individual and highly suspect pattern of movement on a particular day to the hundreds, even thousands of similar cases that they saw in major swing state regions. I'll spare everyone the details of how many they allege and in, in what particular locations, but a spattering of important counties are claimed as having a great many similar patterns where individuals are visiting 20, 30, even 50 ballot drop boxes on the same day or the same night. Now, by itself, in my opinion, this is worth digging into, but they go further. Through a request process, True the Vote was able to acquire official state CCTV footage of these boxes in specific areas that reveal exactly what some of these individuals were doing when they visited. They were not able to get footage from all of the states that they looked at, but for some, they were allowed through a public request process to access, in total, 4 million minutes of surveillance footage. In that footage, they identify certain individuals who presumably are one of the mules in this network that they allege, and they show them placing multiple ballots in a box at the same time at extremely odd hours of the day or night, such as 3 o'clock in the morning. This is where things get very, very problematic. This footage on its face appears to bolster their narrative, but when you buckle down and focus on what they aren't showing us, it does the exact opposite. Throughout the rest of this documentary, they never, not one single time, 
showcase an individual, the same individual, at two separate drop boxes. They show a woman dropping them off overnight with surgical gloves on, where she throws the gloves away immediately after, which is very strange. They show a man dropping them off and letting some fall on the ground, then running away when he's finished. That's strange. They showcase people taking photographs of the ballot box when they're finished dropping them in. That's also strange. But never, not one single time, do they show the same person on the same night at a different location dumping additional ballots. The claim is simple and very, very severe. We have identified hundreds of mules in multiple areas who sometimes visit 50 or more ballot boxes on the same night. We have requested and received CCTV footage for some of those areas, and here are examples of people dropping off ballots, and these things in conjunction with one another prove our case. That's basically what they're saying. But to me, this is the death of the documentary's credibility. Think about this. True the Vote was able to identify specific cell phone signals and track them in a suspect pattern across, as their example shows, 28 ballot boxes in one day. They were able to obtain CCTV footage, 4 million minutes of it, and they focused only on the states where ballot harvesting is illegal. Ballot harvesting, for those that don't know, is a process by which you pick up the completed ballots for other people and then put them in a drop box or turn them in. It's legal in some states, it's illegal in others, and for a few, it allows family members and caregivers to participate, but for the states that they focus on, it's either illegal or restricted to just family members and caregivers. Now, generally speaking, I don't know why you would ever give some other person your ballot to turn in, unless you had to for, like, medical reasons, but yeah, I, this is a really suspect process with a lot of controversy surrounding it. The entire rest of the film, despite having the geo-tracking data and timestamp for cell phones with corresponding CCTV footage in some areas, they do not show the same person twice at separate boxes. They just never do it. Instead of taking one example in an area where their information requests were granted and they have the footage, and tracing that one cell phone signal, showcasing 10 or 8 or even 5 or 6 of the drop boxes being stuffed by this one person in rapid succession on the same night, Instead of doing that, which they obviously should be able to do, if their data claims are accurate in the slightest, they pick just a couple of instances, they do not show further examples of that person's route, and they claim that they know the motivation of this person from that limited scope. I'll go even further. Ballot harvesting is not a legal practice in some of these states, or at the very least it is restricted to family members and caregivers. They acknowledge near the end of the documentary that the woman with surgical gloves on is in Georgia, and if this woman corresponds to one of their cell phone data signals and they've been able to obtain all of the footage in Georgia because they were granted their requests, they can see her entire pattern of behavior that night, presumably. Why would they choose not to show her at all going anywhere else and stuffing different boxes? If they showed her at even just one or two additional ballot boxes unloading five or ten more ballots, they would be able to make an incredibly strong case of individual voter fraud immediately against this person with the data to advance their case on top of it, should they so choose, but they don't do it. Why are they choosing to not show us any of the actual evidence? Why have they chosen not to take even one example of a person who visited 50 ballot boxes on the same day while alleging that those visits were to stuff ballots and even show a few instances of that happening, the same person doing it multiple times with their surveillance footage that they allegedly have? Why in the world did they not do this even one time? If they have the data that they say, they were capable of showing hundreds of people doing this, but chose not to do so and merely put a few examples from different people with very serious claims layered on top of it. If they have indeed identified specific voters making 50 trips to 20 separate ballot boxes with video surveillance of them stuffing even a handful of those boxes in the process, they did not show it to us. They used those words, but they did not show this evidence in the actual movie. And it may seem like they did, because they punctuated the claims with individual instances of a person dropping multiple ballots in a box at strange times or with strange behavior, but their video evidence, whether by choice or lack of ability, simply did not show what they claim on a broader, more consistent scale. Now, when it comes to the underlying potential for this to be true, it's very much there, in my opinion. The entire premise is that mail-in ballots were being sent to everyone on the voter roll in certain states, and according to Pew Research in 2012 at least, I believe, approximately 24 million voters were either no longer valid or significantly inaccurate on those rolls. More than 1.8 million individuals who appeared on voter rolls were deceased, and almost 3 million were registered on voter rolls in more than one state. If you were to take these lists, hypothetically, and mail ballots to every single person on them, that would be millions upon millions of ballots in circulation that presumably should not be there. 
they would be going to the wrong address. They would be showing up for people who are no longer even able to vote or present in the state itself. And the potential might exist for those to be purposed into a wider attempt at voter fraud. Perhaps, but at the very least, it is able to create widespread confusion and skepticism in the public about whether or not the election was secure, which is really not a good thing to have a divided nation like that. However, taking this documentary at face value with what it shows us, not what it claims, there's nothing here, when presumably they have everything to back it up. Why is that? Now, the film goes on to use an unnamed source who alleges that this behavior is widespread, pervasive, and rampant. But we need to subpoena this person. Sources on this topic need to be on record, not in the shadows, while a documentary hides behind a paywall, refusing to actually show the proof that they say they have. The conclusion of all this discusses finance and talks about the flow of money into the election process, but again, they do not name what actual charities are responsible for this, the stash houses, if you will. They do not name what those are or expose the broader pattern that they say exists of video surveillance footage. These are incredibly serious claims, and to deliberately not include things that you must actually have if your claims are true, that would do more to prove your case, makes no logical sense. Major networks, including many that are conservative-owned and run, are refusing to acknowledge this documentary, and at this specific point in time, I completely understand why. Now, that's not to say that the fact-checking on this is any better, because in reality it's almost comically bad, but I understand why there are a lot of people avoiding this film. Now, you can't necessarily fact-check these things without actual testimony and a great deal of work, but what we see, if trying to research more information from opposing viewpoints, which is due diligence, we of course should be doing that if we're evaluating a film like this, are dozens of examples where individual outlets just copy-pasted the short little true-false section from the Associated Press and moved on. Seriously, almost every single website you read that says they are debunking or fact-checking 2000 Mules has directly copied and pasted the AP article by Ali Swenson. To a certain degree, this is normal. The AP sells rights to things like this, to news syndicates, which are different than news agencies. That's an important distinction. But it really doesn't help the counter case when all you can find is a short, rather ineloquent denial of legitimacy. And those same words are replicated everywhere on all the different websites. Now, in the interest of due diligence, I tracked down the writer of this AP column, found her social media, and looked at everything she's done or posted for the past 10 years. Not quite everything, I suppose, as much as I possibly could, though. This writer, according to everything I can find, is rather boring and fairly reputable. She does not tweet insane partisan things. She routinely emphasizes personal accountability for information that you take in, even giving tips on how to reverse image search and parse through inf misinformation that you see about Ukraine. She debunks things that one would reasonably consider to be all across the political spectrum and is not, in my opinion, politically motivated. The fact check and counter information right now against this documentary is bare bones and very unconvincing. It's replicated everywhere, and honestly it's kind of useless, but it's not a deceitful attempt at undermining the film, at least not yet. However, the film itself, despite opening strong and building an extremely compelling case early on, has decided not to show us any of the most compelling evidence patterns that they supposedly have. As a final note here, True the Vote is making dramatic claims about pulling the ripcord and releasing all the data, which is an excellent idea. They should do this, they should make it widely available, and people should be able to sort through all of it themselves. I myself would love to be on board and look at this footage to find evidence if it exists, but taking the film for what it is today, here and now, it is not 2,000 mules, it is 2,000 allegations with no actual proof. Enormous claims with no consistent evidence of any pattern, and it is also, above all else, extremely profitable. I cannot in good conscience look at this film as anything other than a well-made attempt at cashing in on a long-standing trend of skepticism by a particular group of Americans. If they release all of the data, I myself will be one of the people digging, I assure you, but this film did not have the proof it needed to stand up to logical scrutiny here. Despite having an excellent premise and very interesting tactics to try and analyze the election, right? I love the way that they got the data, how they tried to apply it. I think all of that is commendable and excellent. But overall, I'm extremely disappointed and hope that they actually do release the data because they did not show what they needed to to back up those claims. Anyway, that's it. I know this one is highly political. I know that some people will probably be very upset, but I felt like it needs to be said. With legacy media pretending it just doesn't exist, and that's true, almost all major media outlets are probably barring any mention of it from their network. You're not going to hear about it from major networks. And those most supportive, wholeheartedly believing every word that is contained, we are rapidly losing sight of the logical, reasonable middle ground that we so desperately need to stay sane in this world. This was my attempt at landing on that target.
If you want to support, please consider Locals or Patreon, a monthly fee to make the content possible. Also, Odyssey, a YouTube platform alternative. And if you want to watch 2,000 Mules for free, just go to Odyssey, type the name, and you have tons of options. Super easy. There's another creator to check out, merchandise, social media, etc., etc. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.